My name is Chen Fu Wen from Red Hat Company, located in Beijing. Uh, so today I want to present a topic about the journey to Maglet Python 2 project to Python 3. So just I mentioned that I work for Red Hat. I have a bunch of work, working experience in Oracle, Motorola, or Siemens. So this is the agenda today. First, I will have a brief introduction about the protein project. Second part, I will uh, introduce some high-level protein strategies. The third part, I will introduce some automated tools to help you do the migration. The final part will address some common targeting issues. So, so this is the, our protein project overview. Actually, we are pulling two parts together because they are dependent on each other. The first part is our card dash VT. It's some kind of uh, compatibility black in let's your execution virtualization test cases. And then the second part is TB dash libword. It's a kind of a specific test provider to cover some test cases such as libword or virtualization related test cases. Just I mentioned because they are dependent on each other. So we are pulling that together. Before migration or before porting, they both online writing in Python 2007. So what's the motivation behind why we needed to model, uh, migration? There are various reasons. Number one is because on Python 3, we have enjoyed faster Python 2. So there are some statics released by Red Hat that it can save CPU 12% or even more on the memory. Also, there are a bunch of bug fixes on Python 3, some like even CVE is fixed. Also, you can enjoy some advanced features that are not available on Python 2, such as async IO. We also have some better type definition in Python 3. For example, it's to distinguish test string and best string. And also, you can enjoy the real life division, that means the division. So integer division will return float, float now. So the last one is more concrete reason is that until 2020, the pattern two will be end of life. So what's migration strategy? Normally we have three choices. Number one choice is just completely convert currently pattern two code to pattern three and totally say goodbye to pattern two. Number two choice, you can create a separate branch for your Python 2 and Python 3. But it, if you have a new feature arrive or you have a new fix, you need to push separately, so it will double your maintainer and the developer effort. The last choice is the coexist. What mean that? <coughs> means that Python 2 and Python 3, they share the so code base and they work on both Python environments. So specific our strategy to our product, we are saying ground rules. First, we needed to all the Python module or test cases should put into Python version, which is greater than or equal to 3.6. And we need to keep compatibility with Python 2 and Python 3 in the same code base. And also, we make sure that <laughs> Any change pushed to the GitHub or a branch should be validated on both Python 2 or 3. So generally, we also have a good idea that you can use some tools pilot with the option Python 3 key and along it. We are giving your own, uh, lo it will help you to locate the scope changes. So it will give some uh, as last estimate how much effort you need to put in migrating some project. So we set up continue, we use continuous integration to migrate this project. We lovely divide the polling efforts into three phases. In the first one, we just address some issues that some automated tool can help you do that. And in phase two, we just address the more difficult part, such as the difference between text and the binary a string handler on Python 2 and Python 3. We use the increment integration we create a separate pull request according to specific items we met because it helps us 
low low back if we count some issues. We set up test environment because we try to cover any change we as many as uh, we cover any change we can, since that there are huge difference between Python 2 and Python 3. So I just mentioned that we have some supporting effort is time consuming. But it doesn't mean that it needs to do it manually. We have some tools, or the main tools, can help you do the easy stuff things for you. So 203. 203 is the first release kind of automation tool to help you migration your present code to Python 3. And it is actually is a Python program, and it will read some your Python 2 code and apply a serious fixtures finally translating into validated Python code. So under the hood, it depends on the standard library, Lab 203. So Lab, Lab 203 is, contains a serious fixtures and almost kind of almost code for you. More advanced that, Lab 203 is a flexible and a genetic library, so it's possible to write your own fix based on that. So another tool, for, for example, for that is just based on this library. So how to use this? It's quite easy. It's just command line. So you can use the sign passed by some command line parameters. For example, you can use the dash F to specify specific fixtures. Even you can apply on the entire project or specific one file. So Fidelize. Fidelize is also another tool. It's actually is customized to those three based script help you to make Python code, two code or Python 3 code compatible in the same code base. So to those three is just make your code to Python 3. They don't make your code compatible in the same code base. So for the last, can do that. So normally how it's used, you just pass Python 2 code through all the appropriate fixes that turn it valid code. Very naturally, we are at the same uh, import dependence. For example, the other side, Dutch score, future, and the future package in your Python file. Uh, normally, uh, it will run in two stages. Stage one, you just uh, will apply some very safe fix on your entire code. Stage two, will fix some more, not is safe, but the more challenging one, such as the uh, string handling between Python 2 and Python 3. So six, 6 is announced uh, Python 2 and Python 3 compatible library, which is written by Benjamin Peterson. It's a very smart f solution for that. It's only, it's 6 can provide simple utilities for lapping, lapping over difference, Python 2 and Python 3, and they really make your code working on the same Code base without modification. So six is really easy, is a very simple one. It's only one Python file. So anyway, you can easily to copy your know, project at, and then use that. Modernize. Modernize is yeah, it's also a automation tool to help you. It's more conservative way to migrate your Python code to Python three. And uh, it, under the hood, it depends on Python modernization library. It's really seen lab, uh, around lab 223. So it harnesses the uh, lab, lab 223. So it makes your code more modern with the intention of eventually pulling to Python 3. So how do you use, use it? It's quite similar to 223. You just uh, run it in command line. So previously we just talked about tools. Now we kind of find about is some common techniques used behind yeah, in count. I try to categorize those issues with below categories. We are go through go through it. So there are essentially syntax difference between Python two and Python three. For example, print is a function inside of statement. So you can see there are the syntax changes. They say apply for SQL. 
S curve. So there now also is a function instead of statement. We also have some slightly difference in the extension handling. You need to use keyword add now on path three. And uh, many class attributes is not attribute now on path three. It could, should be a parameter in your class constructor. Also, there are slight changes in the list extension. You need to use, uh, in order, you need to enclose your parameter in the, par in the par parentheses. Now also, for some comprehensive functions, such as map, filter, zip, now on panel three, they return illiterate inside a list. So if you want to loop the return value more times, it could be some issue, because uh, it's not listed now. We also have some, uh, for the octal literals, we need uh, as a additional uh, small little case O among that. On Python 3, we only support implicit relative import. So on Python 2, it's support kind of uh, uh, implicit relative import. So now it does not support on Python 3. So you need to use some leading period symbol to do that. On Python 3, it's unify int and a long int. So this syntax not support in Python 3 now because they unify, unify the int and the long int. For the division, on Python 2, two integer divide, divide, divide return to the, in, return the integer, but on Python 3, it uh, return float now. So this is particularly dangerous because uh, it often goes unnoticed. It doesn't slow any syntax error, so to be careful of this. Something is gone means that something is completely removed from Python 3. For example, especially in the dictionary, we can see that uh, dictionary iterate keys, values, items, has a key. This function not available on the Python 3. Instead of you need to use dictionary keys, values, items, this kind of function instead. And uh, they also have some uh, type difference return. So on Python 2, iterative keys will return list. But on Python 3, those kind of functions will return dynamic view. In most cases, it works as you expected, but dynamic view doesn't support uh, index. So if you apply some index on the dynamic view, it will return error. And also, for Unicode function, because uh, on Python 3, we are native support Unicode, so this function is not available. And also, on um, Python 2, we have two global functions to let use to input, uh, input from the command, command line. There are raw dash import and the import on Python 3, there are both of them. But on Python, uh, Python 2, on Python 3, there are only one left, which is input. But they also have some minor change. On Python 2, input, if you input uh, some numbers 1, 2, 3, we will return an integer for you. But on Python 3, this much over the return store. So be careful. That. And also, for the range, as its range, we, on Python 2, we have two functions generate the data. One is S range, the other one is range. So on Python 2, we only have range available. And also, there are some type difference. On Python 2, range will return list. On Python 3, we will return a little later. And the file is completely removed. You can use open or with open, some kind of things. And the command modules also removed. Instead of, you need to use the sub-process. Something is renamed. Because on Python 2, there are some modules, their file name convention was something not good. 
So they try to open three, they just change that. So you can see configure uh, parcel was the case non now it is low case now or and it's applied to queen. And also there are some function attribute begin with function. They all know remove this part, but just uh, put double underscore on it. For the building in module, on pass three, they use underscore at the beginning. Now on pass three, it just use remove that. Picker. On pass two, we have two pick. One is picker, the other one is C picker. And uh, C picker, you have more uh, best performance. But on pass three, they only use the picker. And the underlying, they use some algorithm. Uh, it's less, uh, they implement by C. And six server is the same. They just uh, change the small case. Something is reorganized. What does that mean? That there are quite a number of uh, uh, Python 3 that organize some standard library, move some classes into some other modules. For example, if you are your lab, and you are lab two, and uh, you are your parcel, they are heavily reorganized with individual class and uh, functions distributed to some sub-module. For example, uh, previously, we can import URL app from here, but actually, on Python 3, you need it from this module. It's say happen from here. And uh, also, on Python 3, we are more base HTTP server module into the HTTP dot server, and HTML parcel move to HTML dot parcel. This module. We also see that the load function previously on Python two is the built-in function, not move to the import lab library. So this is just a uh, some reference solution to just make them work on Python two and Python three. But it's not only one. There are quite few options. So from developer point of view, the largest change between Python 2 and Python 3 is the string handling. On Python 2, we are confusing use uh, stir means two different type value. Sometimes it's test, sometimes it's binary. So on Python 3, we are create a separate uh, for, for the string. For example, uh, we have created a separate string. One is text, and the other is the bias. So from the table, you can see text string on Python 3, we use str, and uh, Python 2 is used Unicode. Binary parts on Python 3, we use bias. And uh, test pattern to binary we use turn. So you can see this turn is confusing use. Right? On Python 3, it means test string. On Python 2, it means binary, binary data. So this, this, is, this change is really bring a lot of challenges. So just uh, I mentioned that. So we are some lesson learned. So try not to mix text and binary in, in your string sequence. We have heavily uh, strong here. For example, we are might adopt this kind of issues because there are two different pipes now. This is the test string. This is by string. You cannot combine them together. And also you cannot, here is the pattern is the String, this is bias, so you cannot use this. Also, this is bias, but this is the test string. The uses we are still yeah allows. There are quite oh, there are many situations that you need to convert them. So, you if you want to convert bias to test, just use 
building in decode measures, de 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 decode functions. And if you convert bytes to text, you need a, yeah, decoding that. Because you heavily use this conversion, you can lap some functions like this. So, yeah. This is quite useful because uh, you are heavily used to the conversion. This is a useful resource uh, reference. So let's off. So just time open for question. Yeah, please. So the question is, the, you want to convert some Python 2 string to Python 3? Python 2 binary. Can you repeat that? Sorry, I don't catch your... You can, can you edit it louder or some kind of? So you mean your Python 3, the, uh, we, we needed to use Unicode, right? Or Yeah, you default Unicode. If you use as, as a decoding, you, you can input as a, as a parameter, as a parameter. For example, as encoding, uh, such uh, uh, UTF any of them. So, is no question? No. Okay, no. go ahead. So the question is that if you have some dependency, uh, when you make yeah, actually, I assign other tools to check whether you have a dependency. That tool, you know, can I make this Python 3 or some kind of tools? You go first along that, I check whether your project depends on that. No more? Okay, let's be another with. Thank you for attending.